Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Today I'm going to show you how I made this mug. I'm not sure if I'll go through the heat process, heat press process, but maybe I will. But I want to show you how I designed this. Now remember, these are Disney things. This is just for my own personal use. I'm not selling it. I'm not even giving this one away. I'm going to keep it myself because I'm so happy with it. As you know, I've just begun my journey with sublimation and I appreciate you joining me in this journey. Uh, I'm going to show you the um, products that I use. The uh, sublimation paper that I use is this right here. This is the only kind I've ever used so far because, like I said, I'm new. I'll have it linked for you down below so you can see it as well. It's pretty inexpensive and I'm very happy with the colors the way they turned out. So let's get started at my desktop and see how I designed this thing. This thing. This thing. <laughs> Okay, as you can see by looking at my screen here in Silhouette, and I'm using the Business Edition, but I believe everything I've done today could be done in the free version, and you don't even have to have the software. How easy is it to use a cutter to cut a rectangle around what you've printed? But anyway, let's look at the elements I have. I have the background. I have the Fairy Godmother, Sleeping Beauty, some of the mice, the carriage, Prince Charming, and the horse and the text. So I'm going to show you how I went about putting this together. Let's go to my next screen and I'll show you the pieces I started with. All right, these are some of the pieces that I started with and I actually had a few more. I think I had another Prince Charming. I was thinking it would be fun to use poor little Cinderella when she was busily cleaning the house. My sister used to think she had to clean more than me, so she'd sing a song about herself, and she would just sing, Cinderella, Cinderella, about herself. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Jean Frida. <laughs> anyway, so I decided I did not use these. I, didn't, I couldn't figure out how to fit them in, so I'll just delete them now from this, hitting delete on my keyboard after I select them. Okay, I also couldn't figure out where to place the shoe. And as I said, what I did was I just went out to Google and I just, one time I Googled Cinderella characters. Then I uh, did Cinderella's carriage and I just kept Googling different things and finding stuff. But I decided I didn't really like the shoe either. I couldn't make it fit, so I'm going to delete it. All right, so now I was left with Prince Charming, who I thought was pretty good, Cinderella, and I was trying to decide which one I liked the best. So I had scrolled into all of them and was looking at their faces and the coloring. And this one didn't looked a little tiny bit blurry. I just didn't. But this one, when I found her, I thought, oh, she's the one. So I got rid of this one and this one. And look, isn't she cute? All right, so let's scroll back out. So I found the mice and the fairy godmother. And I looked for a pose that I thought I could maybe rotate and have her getting tapped on the head or bibbity bobbity booed right all right and then the carriage of course so let's uh gonna minimize these things make them a lot smaller and then i'll scroll in to everything make my mat larger so if i was using a mat and if i was cutting this i would probably cut it on my new portrait because it's just the perfect size for eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper and that's what my sublimation paper is um so though the first thing that i did do was i came over to the page setup and i changed it from portrait to landscape like that because i wanted to have a nice area to work on the next thing that i did was i know from the past one that i did that the size that I like to use, let's look at this size. It's three and a half inches tall by about eight inches wide. So I'm going to go back over here. And what I did first was I just drew a rectangle any size, and then I changed it to be 3.5 inches tall. And that works perfectly for these mugs that I have. I'll have a link for you down below where I purchased my mugs, and I'm really happy with them. But I found that three and a half inches works perfectly. I make mine eight and a half inches. 
there's a little bit more of a gap here than sometimes, but I figure it works perfectly for me because I can easily fit two then on um, a sheet of paper. So I'll make this three and a half, 3.5, and I'll make that width eight, like that. I could make it eight and a quarter actually even. I think I will make it 8.25. Make it a little bit wider than my other one. Okay, so now I know what size I have to work with. So the next thing that I did was I just started bringing over my images. However, they're not ready to be brought over if you notice. Um, when I bring this one to the front, there's boxes around all of these things. So naturally, the first thing I need to do is to scroll in on this and go ahead and I can move this up out of the way. Go ahead and trace these. Okay, I decided not to do the carriage first because there's a lot to that, which I'll show you towards the end. And I'll have some tips for you, but I'll just go with one of the easier ones. I'll start with the fairy godmother. And as you can see, there's a box behind her. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace her and come over here to the trace panel on the right, select the trace area and just trace her. Let's scroll way in so we can see what kind of a whoopsie daisy, what kind of trace we're getting. So I need to up my threshold because she's going to be a print and cut. So notice that not everything is has lines around it, so it won't work well. So I need to keep upping my threshold until I get to about there because I think that there might still be some openings here. So I can just gradually go up like that. That looks perfect now. However, let me look at this one area right here. Okay, there's a gap right there. I'm wondering if I f go up a little higher if that'll get filled in. Okay, once I get up that high, it starts getting ugly though. So I'm going to go back down to where it looks better to me. Let's see, let's move this over. Everything looks like it's colored in except for this part. So what I'm going to do right here is something that's going to connect these two so that it'll be traced all in one piece. So all I'm going to do is come over here to what's called the line tools. Click on that button and get the third one in because that's the curved one and I seem to like to use that one the best. Then just come over here where her hand is yellow where it's already been traced and click. And then just continue to click until I get to the other yellow part. Then I can double click to end that. And notice now that these two pieces are actually connected. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could have widened that a little bit, come to this line tool again. I could make it wider, maybe if I'm coming up here to the weight area, I could maybe even make it a two point, and then just try that again and see what happens and see how that's gonna fill in there now. That'll be better like that. So. I'll scroll back out now. Whoopsie, now I've moved my box, so I better make sure I move it all the way over. Everything looks traced beautifully. I'm going to say trace and detach. Move her out. You can probably barely see the box that's left here. I'll draw a box around it to select it and hit delete on my keyboard. Now I'm going to right click on her to bring her to the front so we can see how she's going to look on top of this. Now, one of the things I did do on mine was, if you look closely, very closely, you can see a bit of a white outline around her. And I did not want that to show up in my final product. So this is what I did for this. Let's, um, I, get, I went ahead and grabbed, selected her, and then I came over here to the offset tool, and I said internal offset. Now notice this offset line, hopefully you can see it, it's really, really big. I'm going to make it a very, very small offset. I'm going to put 0 0.005 and hit enter. And now if you can see, it's just barely, barely going to go inside that white border, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm going to go ahead and select with that offset selected, hold down my shift key, grab her as well come over here to the modify panel and say crop and that cropped it right out. 
there's still a little bit left of the white, but I think that's a lot better than it was. All right, so she's done up there. Now the mice came in as transparent PNGs. I'll show you if I went to file and merge, and this is my folder that I made of all the items I was using or thinking I was gonna use. Here are the mice. And if I hover over them, it says it's a PNG file, and it's a true PNG with the background being transparent. And when I merge it in, okay, there they come in as a transparent file, perfect like that. So there's the mice and the fairy godmother. So we'll do Prince Charming next. Notice there's a box around him as well. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and um, trace it select the trace area he's easy to do like that again I'll scroll in so you and I can both see if it's gonna get everything and that looks perfect so I'm just gonna say trace and detach there he is I can get rid of this box that was around him delete and he's done and ready to go I'll right click on him bring him to the front so he can come up here see if he's got a bunch of white around him he does not have a bunch of white but he does have these white areas in here and if I want him to look realistic I want to get rid of those so I'm just gonna bring him down here and I'm gonna to go to uh, so the trace tool again this time I'm gonna get the eyedropper which is trace by color I'm gonna say trace by color and I'm going to just get one piece at a time again because if I say all areas, it's gonna get everything like that. I just want the single area, but I'm going to up the threshold a bit so it gets it nicely. Trace and detach. That allows me to take this piece right out. Don't forget to delete it. And check it out when I bring him up. Now that's transparent back there. Looks like I could have gotten it a little bit more, but I'll try on this one. So I'm gonna trace by color here. <clears throat> Up the threshold, trace, and detach. Click on that piece and delete it, and then move him up and let's see, did I do better? I did do better that time. So do you see there's not, a, there's not the white showing through? But you get the idea for this, right? So this little bit of white by his head, if I wanted to, I could trace that and get rid of it maybe. So let's trace by color one more time. See if I can scroll way in and get that little bit of white. So trace by color, get this little tiny bit of white. Uh, it's getting all of that, but that's okay. What if I up the threshold? Let's see what's gonna happen. I'll say trace and detach. So I should be able to get rid of that now, delete. Okay, let's bring him up now, scroll out and bring him up and see how he looks. And all these extra little things you're doing will make your image look so much sharper. Like all this white in here that I could have gotten if I had up my threshold when I first did my detach here. And there's a little bit of white around his face too. So it, actually what I could do right now if I want to to get rid of that stuff, and I notice there's some stuff down here, I better delete, delete, because that'll, cause problems later delete okay so what I could do now if I wanted to is the same thing I had done before with the fairy godmother I could come over here to the um, trip excuse me the offset panel with him selected say internal offset and make that internal offset again 0 0.005 and hit enter and then with that selected hold down my shift key select him and then come over here to the modify panel open that and say crop and that hopefully cropped any of that white right out of there sure did look at that even in here it looks much better all right so he's done okay let's see what else do we have to do cinderella she's quite easy as far as i recall from when i did it earlier so again, come to the uh, trace panel, select the trace area, trace around her. I didn't get it big enough, but that's okay. We have these boxes here on the side. I can just drag it larger and drag it down this way. Okay, obviously I need to up the threshold quite a bit. 
And you can tell that this isn't good enough yet because check it out, look at her arm. So I really need to bring that threshold up. So maybe if I make it 98, 97, 97 looks good. That's still closed here. I was looking at this area. So let's see if everything looks like it's closed. What if I go to 96? Okay, that makes that open right there. So I'm going to go back up to 97. See if there's any place I need to specifically adjust. Looks perfect. A few extra stragglies over here. but So we'll say trace and detach. Scroll out. Let's bring her up here. Whoops, right click, bring her to the front. And get rid of the box that was behind her, as you can see right here. Delete that. Looks like I might see some crumbs over here too, so I'll delete those. All right, we got an issue with her again also. We don't want this white to show. We want it to look more realistic. So just bring her down here so you can see. I'm going to go over to the trace by color, trace it by color, grab that, up the threshold. So I make sure I get, whoops, not that far, that far, trace and detach which allows me to get rid of this piece right here and delete it. Let's check it out. Is there too much white around her that I want to get rid of some of that? Hmm, doesn't look too bad. Um, I think she looks okay. This is just a judgment call on your part. I could probably go in just a tiny little. Let's check it out. Let's do the offset again. Highlight her. Come to the offset, internal offset. You know what I'm going to do, you guys? I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of her so we can check and see which one we like better. So this one has the internal offset that I want to delete because I don't want to. I got to start again with that part. Oops, not that. Delete this. Delete and Okay, so I'm going to put an internal offset on her, that really small one, 0 0.005, enter. And with both of those, her, that offset selected, hold down my shift key, select her, and come over here to the modify panel, and say crop. And let's see, which one do we like better? All right. There's not that much difference, but... I can see some difference, and I do like this one better. Look right here around her chin. So if you're really trying to make this look good around her chin, this one looks better. So I'm not going to keep this one on the left. I'll delete her, and I'll keep the one on the right. All right. So we have everything done except for the carriage. So let's do that really quickly. I'm not going to do the whole carriage though because there's quite a bit of it that you need to work on. I'm going to grab all these, grab some of these little junky pieces that are left. And I think I'll just make... Okay, so what I did just now was I went ahead and changed the color of this background right here so you could see more clearly what I'm doing. And in case you're wondering, how I did that was I went to Edit and Preferences. I went to Display. And I like my current thing to be light. I don't like it dark. But I changed my background color to gray. I could make it dark and apply. That makes it really, really dark. But I think I just liked it gray. So I'll say apply, okay. And so now you can see more clearly what I'm doing. So let's scroll in. And the first thing I'm gonna do is trace this. So obviously come over to the trace, select the trace area and trace. And I'm gonna up my threshold. Do I get to about there? Cause it looks like everything's complete. Let's look at his face and his leg down here. Okay, that's a skinny line, but that's complete. And this is a complete line as well. So that looks pretty good. So I'll scroll back out just so we can see. Or Whoopsie. And I'll say so trace and detach. And so now I can get this box and delete it. So my 
carriage looks pretty good, except for there's some white pieces in here that I want to get rid of. And these are the pieces right in here that'll take you a little bit of time to get rid of. So I'll just do a few of these. And then if you get this same carriage, you'll know what to do. So next thing I would do is say, uh, come up here to trace the trace panel on the right, trace by color. And I'm going to get rid of this window right here. Notice that it's kind of jaggedy around here. So obviously I'm going to up its threshold, but not that far. And I'll say trace and detach. And that allows me to move that right out and delete it. So I'll do this. I'll continue doing the same thing right here around his reins. I'll go ahead and do this. Now, it would be nice if I could select all areas. <coughs> Sorry. But look what happens when I do. I mean, it does just doesn't work very well. So I'm going to do it like this. Trace and detach. And I'm going to continue like this. Now, there might be an easier way to do this. Seems like I had done it an easier way before. So if you remember the easier way to get more of these at one time, um, feel free to comment in the comment section below the video. So I could just continue to go through it like this. So I'll finish this carriage and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, I've got all the images done. They're ready to go. The final thing I did was I got the background. So once again, I came over to Google and I just searched in there Cinderella background. And these are the backgrounds that I got. And here's the one I saved. So let's just go ahead and bring that in. So I'll go file merge because I'm going to bring it into the same page and which one was it oh gosh you know I'm thinking maybe I did not save it here so I've got to go back there and all I'm going to do is right click on this and copy image then I'll come back here into silhouette and right click and paste and there's the image that I ended up using. As you can see, it's way too big for my cup, right? So the first thing that I did was I went ahead and made its size. Remember, I needed to be for this, for my mug, no more than three and a half inches tall for this 11 ounce mug that I use. So I'm going to first of all come up here, lock the lock, and change this to be a height of 3.5 inches and hit enter which is going to automatically change my width as well so that's going to fit on there perfectly and actually I could if I wanted to just make my mug image that big but what I decided to do for mine was I just went ahead and stretched it so it would fit right so it was 8.25 by 3 which worked perfectly for me Okay, so the next thing I did was just started to bring down my images here. And I can actually, I can get rid of this rectangle. I no longer need it. And so I'm going to use this one instead. All right, so I'm going to scroll in further again. All right, so then I just started trying to figure out what way I wanted these guys to go. I'm going to right click on this one to send it to the back so that when I bring these images up, they will be in the right area. Look, I could just put this on here, right? And I bet I could have a make it so Cinderella's little head was peeking out of this window if I wanted to and crop this off. She could be going to the ball and the fairy godmother could be up here as if she had just done this. That would be cute just like that, right? But to show you the one that I did, and this would be just cropped, I'd make her face a little bit smaller, maybe right click on her and say flip her horizontally so she was looking this way as if she was looking t forward, you know. But anyway, I'll just do this the way I had done it before. So let me uh, bring over my one so I can kind of copy it. So it was here. Cinder I'm going to right click on it and say copy. Then I can bring it over here and right click and paste. And there's the one I finished, right? All right, so I did do a few more effects to these things to make them look a little bit more realistic as well. 
move this down and move this down. All right. So the first thing I guess I could do is just go ahead and put on the carriage. So I'm going to right click on the carriage to flip it horizontally like that. And then of course I resized it so it would kind of make sense and I wanted to be able to see the castle behind it. So I resized it by pressing in like this. And I can just put it right here for now. Okay, and then the next thing that I did was, <clears throat> let's just bring in Cinderella. So obviously she's going to need to be smaller as well. I'll just push her in like that. And I right clicked on her and I flipped her horizontally because I wanted her to face the carriage. Need to make her kind of proportionate so she doesn't look like a giantess near her carriage. I think I made the carriage a little bit bigger. And then there she is. Then I brought the mice in next. And I brought them to the front because I wanted them to kind of hide this wheel a little bit. So I right click and I say um, bring to the front. And I need to make them a lot smaller so they make sense. Like that. And let's see what else. Okay. And then I got the fairy godmother, bring her up here and make her smaller as well. It's hard. There we go. She's tapping on Cinderella's head. Okay, now I don't know if you can see or not, but what I did do on each one of these images was I added a shadow to it because I thought it made it look a little bit more realistic. So to add a shadow to the carriage and the horse, I just clicked on it and came over here to this effects panel. The last button over is the shadow. Right now it's on no shadow. I made it have a shadow and I made my Y a zero and I made the X a two, zero two, and I hit enter. That just makes a very slight shadow I'm going to change the transparency of that and I'm also going to make it a dark black color like that. So you see what that does? It just makes it a little bit more interesting. If you don't like it that dark, of course you can change your transparency again. Right? I could change the transparency of that shadow. Got to select the shadow. And then I can change its transparency so it's just Oh, just a brief, just a mild transparent. And maybe I don't want it quite that dark. So I could, you know, change it like that. And I just think that that makes it look kind of cool. Whoopsie. To have that little shadow on there. Okay, so the shadow, maybe you can see when I go like this, you can barely see the shadow on him. All right. So let me show you on something else. I'll put the shadow on Cinderella now. So again, I'm going to come to the same tool, come to the shadow, and I just decided for mine, I like this to be a 0 0.02, hit enter, and I'll make my transparency go, let's say like that, and I'll make this be a 2, 0. Oh, wait a minute, I made my Y z a nothing delete zero and I made this be a point zero two and hit enter and then I could come down here and change the shadow color and it's very hard to see but there's a faint shadow on her I could make it bigger whoops that's So the reason why it's not showing up, you guys, is I have it clicked on no shadow. I want to add a shadow on her. Let's get rid of this junk over here now. There's my shadow I made. That's kind of neat. But let me, uh, the reason, let me release this shadow. Release the shadow. Release the shadow. 
So that'll allow me to delete this. So now again, I want to put a shadow on this. Right now it says no shadow. So I need to come up here to shadow and it's way too big. Check that out. But I can move it over here like that if I want to. But remember I said I wanted 0 0.02 so it's just a tiny little shadow that makes her stand out a little bit. If I don't like it that dark I could make it lighter but I could bring her up here now and it just kind of gives her a little 3D look. So the same thing must have happened when I was doing the shadow on the horse. Um, I think I want it to be a black shadow. There we go. Now it's showing up. All right, now I'm going to put a shadow on the fairy, Godmother. So there she is. She's selected. No shadow is selected. The way I get the shadow again is to come here to this image effects, come to the third button over, and make sure that the shadow type that you're choosing, I want to put it around her. Right now it says no shadow. I want a shadow around her. Can you see the large shadow that it automatically put on her? this grayish color. That's not what I want. I'm going to change my Y to a zero. Hit enter. That moved the shadow. But I also want it to just be a tiny little off shadow. So I'm changing it to 0 0.02. Hit enter. You see how that made a much smaller shadow? And I can change its transparency to totally transparent to none. But what I want to do is change the color because I like it a dark color like that. Okay, and let's scroll back out and you can see that that just makes, I just like the way that looks. Let's give a shadow to the mice. Put a shadow on them. It comes in huge. I don't want a Y, so I'm going to make that a zero and hit enter. I'm going to make my X shadow 0 0.02 and hit enter. And I'm going to change my shadow color like that and change my transparency like that. And maybe make them a little smaller and put them down here. So let's move this in. All right, let's see what we've got going on. Let's scroll out and let's check it compared to this one. It's looking pretty good looking pretty very similar. Let's grab all this and move it all up and put this one here. Okay, we have both of them here. So I can adjust these how I want. I put her up there so she'd kind of tie in with the text. Cinderella, I put this. I even tilted her a little bit more so it looks like she's flying and giving Cinderella the wand. I'll move this over a little bit more move this over here, move Cinderella over a little bit. Oh, I forgot Prince Charming. That's what's missing. So we need to bring him up in here too. And I just decided to put him right here by the horses, by the horse. He's still too big, so I'm going to make him smaller. And I wanted him to be in front of the horse to kind of cover a little of this. So I right clicked on him and said, bring him to the front. And there he is. And of course, since I've added a shadow to everybody, I better add a shadow to him. So I'm going to right click on him or click on him and come over here to the image effects panel again. Come to the shadow, turn the shadow on. You could see that popped it on right away. Way too big. I want this to be zero. Enter. And I want this to be 0 0.02. Enter. I don't want any transparency. And I want to change the shadow color to a darker color like that. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's what I did. Other than putting text in here. And of course, if you're making this for somebody's birthday, you could do that. Um, yeah. Okay. I flipped my page back around so it's in portrait style rather than landscape. Because I like to print one on my sheet. And then the next time if I think of something else to make, I can put that same sheet through again after I've cut this off and not waste it. But I did turn on my show print border so I make sure this is within the print border. The other thing I failed to show you is this. When I was doing the, um, let me ungroup this. When I was doing the shadows, 
let's go back over there to this and this area okay I had to make sure that I released the shadow if I don't release the shadow before I group everything when I group somehow the shadow becomes uh, hidden so I want my after I put all those shadows on there and I really like the way they look I want them to stay there when I group these things so you do this you click on the whatever one and as you're going you say release shadow and that allows it to be released from the image and you can then group it and it'll stay perfectly the way you want okay anyway now I'm ready to go ahead and print this so I'm gonna right click on it and say flip horizontally remember better not forget to do that or you will have a wasted mug it, trust me I know I have plenty of them but anyway I've got that ready to go so I'm gonna come up here to file and print and I'll just say print again I don't bother with these settings here at all just say print again and then my real settings will come up and I'll have my Epson because that's the one that has the sublimation ink in it I'll go to preferences and make sure that the thing that I decided for sublimation is showing and for that I like to have mine on for the cosmos ink that I like to use and it's linked down below and the paper I'm using I have plain white plain paper slash bright white for more settings I changed mine to the highest quality I could and I think that's probably all I did if I want to I could say print preview and it will show me a preview before it prints it so I'll check that on for right now and just say okay print and now it's going to show me the preview and this is the preview of what's going to be printed on my computer printer over there so I'll go ahead and print it and I'll be right back okay I have my heat press warming up I purchased the four-in-one version of the heat press which it included this mug press but I have that heating up for my 11 ounce mugs that I buy that I'll have a link for you down below I have the heat press set for 385 degrees for 190 seconds but right now what I'm going to do is show you this is what's going to be put on my cup notice that it's reversed I'm going to show you why you don't need to buy a, a, a cutting machine if you're going to do sublimation on mugs or shirts all you need to do is get a pair of scissors you don't need to cut this on your cutting machine although it's easier if you do and especially if you're making things for t-shirts that aren't you know rectangular shape like this or not exactly a rectangle as I said I'll save this other piece and I'll put it through this way in my printer again because I can get one or two more mugs out of one sheet of this paper and if I'd like to I can go ahead and trim these edges down to match but I think that'll be okay like that I'll grab a mug while this is heating the mugs come in a nice box that's really well protected and each one is individually wrapped in plastic so it's kind of nice for putting in a box if you're giving it for a gift or just putting it in a bag whatever but here it is the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on I've already got my heat tape into little sections to make it easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead and put a piece on this side and go ahead, maybe you can see, and put a piece on the opposite side so that as soon as I run it around my cup, it'll be ready to begin with. So, here's this. Got to make sure I don't put it on upside down. Seems like something I might do. So, I'm going to go like this. And I want to make sure that the bottom has a nice little gap before I put it on. like to make sure that this looks about even on both sides of the um, 
handle. That looks good. And again, like I said, I like to have a little bit of a white space at the bottom of my mug. So like about like that. I'm going to make sure that it's nicely around, meaning the rim area looks to be about the same. Then I'm going to take another piece of my tape and make sure that I get the bottom really well done. And maybe I'm going to overachieve and get another piece for the top as well. Get this. Because I want this to really stay on here firm. Firmly. There. Okay, that looks good. And then I think I'll put another piece here and here. This is the tape that I'm using. I'll put a link for it down below also, just so you know what I'm talking about. But I do appreciate it if you do use my links. It allows me to get some supplies so that I can continue to make tutorials for you. By the way, if you do like my tutorials, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Comment, like. I sure appreciate it. All right, so that's like probably overkill. Oftentimes I've just used one piece, but since I'm doing this for you here, I wanted to make sure it worked out really well. So now I'm going to go ahead as my heat press is up to 385. So this is ready to go. I simply put this in here. Make sure that it's pretty well in there evenly. And just go ahead and close this handle up pressure on it. Not so much pressure, obviously, that it breaks. Hit my timer, and this will go for a, a minute, no, 190 seconds. And so I'll stop right here, and I'll be back when that's done. Okay, there are about 30 seconds left before the timer goes off. When the timer goes off, I'll open this, take the mug out with a pot holder. It's really, really hot. You'll burn yourself horribly. The handle's not too bad, but the rest of it, really hot. So the timer's just about to ring, 10 seconds. This is so much fun, I always can't wait to see what I get. Turn the timer off, open up the heat press, and take the mug out. Now. The mug is out, obviously. Oh, the paper is just about burning. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting this little piece of tape started. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh my goodness, you guys. Wait till you see. Look how beautifully that turned out. There's a new the sentiment I put on it. Oh, I love it. Isn't that super duper cute? My goodness, I love doing this. So that's how easy it is to do sublimation on a mug. And of course, like I said, you could do the same technique on a shirt with sublimation or with that transfer vinyl paper slash whatever it's really called for heat transfer. But thank you so much for joining me. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, like I said. Check out my links down below. It really does help me, help support the channel. Thanks, bye-bye. I think these mugs look really similar. The only difference is the l mug I just made, I remembered to trace out the part of Cinderella between her arm and her body. That's the mug on the left. The other one, notice there's that white spot in there. But I'm thrilled with both of them. I like how they both turned out. Thanks again. Bye. Bibbidi-bobbidi-bye.